over the Peugeot of Louise Aitken Walker. Round three took us back into the forests for the Fram Filters Welsh Rally. Cardiff Castle, once again the starting point for the two-day joust through the Welsh forests. Behind Jimmy McRae on the previous round, the Circuit of Ireland, had come Phil Collins, his best ever international result. He'd be carrying the onboard camera in his Sierra Cosworth. Malcolm Wilson had high hopes among the front-wheel drive runners, but all eyes really were on David Llewellyn in the four-wheel drive Audi 200. Could Llewellyn at last win his home event in Wales? No, we haven't uh, finished a rally yet this year, so uh, we certainly hope that the luck is going to change on this rally. Even though this rally's never been particularly lucky for me, I've always seemed to have sort of problems and, uh, you know, the best finish is fourth, so it's pr probably my worst rally in the Open Championship. I think that's down to your home international, uh, a lot of sort of pressure and uh, trying too hard, I think, is, uh, is my biggest problem. So I'm trying to treat it just like another rally. Jimmy McRae certainly knows those problems, six times a winner of the Circuit of Ireland, but so often second on his home event in Scotland. But here in Wales, 180 forest stage miles to come through the tough complexes like Breckford, Dovey and Haffron. So understandably, a gentle start with a chance for the big crowds to get a good look at the cars in a series of spectator stages. This is Llewellyn with a new engine in the Audi 200 and with four-wheel drive obviously happy about the damp stages. The two Landau stages enabled the drivers to get a good look at each other as well. The well-in pursued by the Ford Sierra Cosworth of Mark Lovell. Lovell, who crashed out when well-placed on the circuit of Ireland, planning to take things a little gently early on, Terry Harriman in the co-driver's seat. Mark Lovell. Pentia Ricola, winner of the opening round in Yorkshire, provider of endless entertainment on the circuit of Ireland, just the same in the early stages in Wales. Malcolm Wilson with the six-speed gearbox in the Astra GTE. Wilson in pursuit of Ricola at Landau. Two laps of the stage required, so next time round it's Auricola in pursuit of Mark Lovell. Auricola can afford to throw the Mitsubishi about, but in a few stages time those tyre barriers will become logs and trees. Other runners, the Skodas, first and second in their class on the circuit of Ireland, entries once again for John Horgland and Warren Hunt. And the Peugeots, already locked in their usual tight personal battle, Cali Grundle ahead in the 309 GTI, hotly pursued by teammate Louise Aitken Walker in the 205 GTI. And Phil Collins having problems like everyone else on this tight corner at Butte Park. At least two or three seconds there, and he's coming up to the next guy now. Let's see if he's learned well to do this. And Arnie Stenshorn in a Lancia Delta making hay at the same corner. At Landau, the competition sometimes getting a little intense. Bertie Fisher powers his Cosworth Sierra inside the Group N version of Gwyndaf Evans. After all the entertainment of the spectator stages, we emerged with a leaderboard headed by Jimmy McRae with co-driver Rob Arthur. Second place, Pentia Ricola and Ronan McNamee in the Mitsubishi Storion. Mark Lovell, surprisingly off the pace in the first five stages, dropping down to eighth as the field approached the forest sections. Unlike previous Welsh rallies, there were no more tarmac stages to come, much to the regret of Phil Collins, a renowned tarmac expert.
opening skirmish almost over and the cars now heading to the Brekfor Forest Complex, a total of 40 forest stage miles without service, more familiar Welsh terrain. Despite the early rain, the stage is very dusty and straight into the lead, the Mitsubishi of Pentiaricola. Consistently quick times and problems for the other runners gave Auricola a three second lead after nine stages. Those problems also meant that Torbjörn Edling had fought his way into second place ahead of Llewellyn's Quattro. Llewellyn with a small power steering problem on the car that was otherwise performing well. But that problem didn't prevent him taking an occasional hand off the wheel. Jimmy McRae's problem had been a puncture a mile from the end of a stage. He lost a minute with that and with the lack of service was forced to use worn tires on the rear. Despite all those setbacks, McRae also in a relaxed frame of mind. McRae down to fourth, about 30 seconds ahead of Mark Lovell's Sierra. Lovell had recovered from his slow start from the spectator stages to be challenging for the lead by stage eight, but lost time after a spin dropped him back down the order. In sixth, it's Malcolm Wilson and Ian Grinrod in their Vauxhall Astra GTE. Malcolm going steadily and very happy with the new six-speed gearbox. Also upgraded suspension on the car, which was working well on the rough stages. The next step forward for Malcolm should be the arrival of the 16 valve Astra, which is scheduled to make its first appearance on the Ulster. The Peugeot of Cali Grundel seventh, both Grundel's 309 and Louise Aitken Walker's 205 had extensive work done to the engine management system since the circuit of Ireland, and as a result, both had about an extra 15 horsepower to play with. On board with Phil Collins in time for a rather nervous moment in the Sierra Cosworth. Collins with Brian Thomas alongside him, making only slow progress up the leaderboard, lying ninth after nine stages. bit of a reintroduction to the forest for Collins because of one problem or another he'd reckoned he clocked up only about a hundred forest miles since last year's Scottish but he wasn't making too many mistakes Collins then ninth behind a running order that had Auricola leading from Edling, then David Llewellyn, Jimmy McRae, Mark Lovell, Malcolm Wilson just ahead of Callie Grundle in seventh. Grundle's teammate Louise Aitken Walker had lost about a minute after a puncture and then a spin, so Louise, well out of the top ten, determined to make up ground and especially to mount a serious attack on the other front wheel drive challengers, the Astras. Leading challenger in the up to 1600cc class, once again, Graham Middleton in the Toyota. On to Crooken and Esker David, and the battle at the front of the field couldn't be tighter. Just three seconds covering the first three cars, still a Ricola leading from the Audi of Llewellyn and the Mazda of Edling. 
On the faster stages like this, the advantage certainly seemed to be with the Mitsubishi against the heavier Audi. But Llewellyn in just the position he wanted to be, a position from which to challenge for his first victory on his home event. Fourth place, McRae, just 15 seconds off the lead. Malcolm Wilson in sixth, the head of Grundle's Peugeot, and the new partnership working extremely well. Wilson soon had to force his way past the Mazda of Sundström to take fourth. Sundström would exit overnight with a blown turbo. Callie Grundle in seventh, plagued at this point with an overheating problem, but Grundle still staying ahead of the Sierra Cosworth of Phil Collins. <laughs> Collins still having a good steady drive. A couple of wrong tyre choices have prevented him from making a more concerted attack, but things still looking pretty exciting from the back seat. Collins eighth and also featuring in the top ten as the field headed toward Aberystwyth at the end of the first day. Mats Jonsson in the Eurosport Cadet GSI. He was ninth. Louise Aitken Walker here in the Peugeot was just outside the top ten and would establish herself among the top runners overnight. And apparently taking charge overnight to the delight of the home support, David Llewellyn. Llewellyn went ahead as Auricola hit temporary gearbox problems. Now here on the long Hafren stage, Llewellyn was 26 seconds ahead and the event had only 42 more miles left to run. Could this at last be Llewellyn's long-awaited home victory? Auricola with his gearbox sorted gives chase, but the Audi seems to hold all the advantages. Auricula clearly attacking, and then high on the mountainside, Llewellyn hits an enormous problem. The leader rolled, and he'll now need the spectators' help to get back in the event. Auricula takes the lead, Jimmy McRae seemingly promoted to second, but at this point unaware of the disaster that's befallen Llewellyn. But a spectator warns McRae of the problem around the next corner. Let's watch that again. It seemed that Llewellyn clipped a pile of logs on an awkward, slippery corner and just couldn't keep the heavy Audi together. Onto his roof, a burst of flame, but the spectators got the car back on its wheels by the time McRae arrived right behind him. The Audi pouring tire smoke and dust into the windscreen of the open champion. Llewellyn carrying on, but how much further can he get? Well, the answer is not very far. Emergency service at the end of the stage reveals a bent subframe along with the rest of the damage. Llewellyn's Welsh challenge is over. Heartbreakingly close to victory. Well, it was just um, a, a patch of mud over a crest. I mean, it was a very slight corner. And uh, with the car being quite heavy, that when you hit a piece of mud, of course, the, the weight just takes it off. And uh, we just hit a pile of logs on the outside and just sort of rode over them and went upside down just after. It damaged the subframe, bent it too badly for the boys to repair. They did try desperately for a quarter of an hour to try and keep us going, but, uh, but they failed. I've wanted to do well on the Welsh for the last five years, five years so uh, um, um, it just, just doesn't treat me well, Wales, at all. The whole field, including the leader, Auricola, all desperately sorry for Llewellyn, but everyone promoted a place, and Malcolm Wilson here, now up to a spirited third, 
despite all the advantages he's giving to the more powerful cars around him. Phil Collins has had a good night. He's just two places behind Wilson in fifth. We join him on that half-run stage, which spelt the end for Llewellyn, and you can see precisely the kind of problems that the drivers are encountering. combination of a wet slippery surface, bright early morning sunshine, plus the log piles at the side of the road, and you can see exactly why Llewellyn went off at this spot here. Collins keeps it all together, but no chance for him to relax, because just about 16 seconds behind is the similar car of Mark Lovell. The 1986 Open champion has had a troubled rally, punctures and turbo problems, but still with a chance of a respectable result. Louise Aitken Walker has also continued her climb up the leaderboard, now up to seventh. Then into the frame, Dave Metcalf with Mike Broad alongside him, Metcalf's Astra in front of the similar car of Mats Jonsson. <laughs> John Horgland leads the Skoda contest, teammate Warren Hunt going out overnight. Nobody wanted to take any more risks as the rain came down, especially not Penty Auricola, almost a minute in front and heading for his second victory of the season. Equally, Jimmy McRae happy to settle for the runners-up spot after his victory in the last round. The surprising speed of the two-litre Astra giving Malcolm Wilson third spot after his third place in Ireland. Then a splendid fourth on his first contest in Wales, Torbjorn Edling. But having to fight all the way for fifth, Phil Collins. Now try not to think about the drop on the left as you watch the moment that Collins has here. In surviving to confirm a fifth place that was very hard earned indeed. Mark Lovell sixth and maybe a little disappointed with that by the end he dropped almost a minute behind Collins. Seventh place, a fine result after her earlier problems, Louise Aitken Walker in the Peugeot. And taking eighth, despite a small spin, four stages from home, Dave Metcalf, Astra GTE. Forcing his way into ninth to take Group N honours, Gwyndaf Evans. And making up the top ten, the cadet GSI of Mats Jonsson. Hogland, the top Skoda, but no class honours. The up to 1300cc class was taken by Colin McRae in the Nova. But overall success, once again, went to Penti Auricola in the Mitsubishi Starion. <laughs> Congratulations, Penti. Well done. Penti co-driven, as ever, by Ronan McNamee. Dab hands at the champagne now as they record their second win of the season. The Mitsubishi, after the success in Yorkshire, proving it's no fluke in Wales. Pent is winning margin 28 seconds over Jimmy McRae and Malcolm Wilson, his second third place in successive events.